הלכה ב' היא הלכות חנוכה, הן ליקוטי הלכות, בי רבי נחמן, בי רבי נתן מברסלב. הלכה ב'. And we learned a little bit from that part of Likutei Moran that Rabbi Nathan is bringing in the beginning of the Torah, the Aklal, and that rule that by patient means that the person is sighing, and we told that wonderful story on sighing, that it can help, that it's helping, that it's working. You can fulfill all of your lackings. I heard an amazing story today, an amazing, amazing story, story for Hanukkah. You, you, you cannot believe it, Amash. Um, there, there was a priest that he was a priest of, of a prison. He was the priest of the prison and he's, uh, and he's over there. And one day, and there was a prisoner, a Jew, also in that prison. And, uh, and there was a, a messenger from Chabad that was coming to, to visit him you know, once in a few days to visit that Jew in prison. And, um, and in one of the days, so that uh, it was Hanukkah, and that um, rabbi from Chabad, he brought um, latkes, he brought levivot, chamot. And, uh, and he brought with him also, in few papers that he brought, he brought the recipe for the latkes, for the levivot. <laughs> and uh, when he came, he needs to go through that priest, he's the, he's the supervisor on the religious, so he needs to check what he's bringing, everything is okay. And, and he sees the recipe of the latkes and he's reading it. And he's reading it again, and he's looking at the rabbi and looking at the recipe again and again. And, Regular latkes. And then he asked him, he's asking the rabbi, the priest is asking the rabbi, where he got that recipe from? So he's telling him, this is a regular, my mother, this is how she's making latkes. And well, my wife, this is how she's making latkes. And this is the levivot, this is what I'm. So I told him, listen, my mother, she is making the same levivot also. The exactly the same recipe. Something, you know, something is weird here. So that Rebbe from Chabad, he was bold, brazen. And he told him, you need to check about your religious. Probably you're a Jew. This is what he told him. That priest went home, asked his mother, told her, What's, where you got that recipe? She said, it's from my mother. And she so asked her, do we have a certain connection to Judaism? She told them, yes, your grandmother, she was Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. She was Jewish. Yes, this is it. She was Jewish. And he, he made tshuva. And, and he, <laughs> he made tshuva. And he learned. And he went to yeshiva. And he started to learn. And he becomes to be a rabbi. And he got permission from, from I don't know who to be a rabbi. He was the first rabbi of, of that prison. A rabbi in, a, in the prison, instead of a, a, a priest, and he becomes to be a rabbi. And he was in charge of all the issues of, of <laughs> religious in that prison. He kept that job and he becomes to be a rabbi. Look, from a latkes, from a, from a levivot, you cannot understand it. Ruben. So, it's amazing, Ramash, it's amazing. What? Like we say in the Ananisim, the Hashem have put the, uh, the impure ones into the hands of the pure ones oh, to conquer. <laughs> so, Rabbi Nathan is bringing over there, Rabbi Nachman is in the Torah, everyone that wants to stand against evil people, he cannot do that unless if he is a total righteous man means that he separated the bad from the good. Because when you want to conquer the evil people, you have to go down to the bad attribute of that evil man, that this is that pipe of that evil man, that through that pipe he's receiving all of his power. And by that, if the man is really righteous, that he is not um, def um, in, in, in infected, He's not, he doesn't have the defect of that bad attribute, so he can go down through that pipe and he will not going to be damaged. And by that to conquer and to humiliate that attribute. And by that you can mm, take the evil people down. 
and and more and more and his Rabbeinu is bringing over there that by Torah and prayers you can separate the bad from the good also we heard from Rabbeinu that he said that even when you are related and connected to a righteous like that a real righteous man complete righteous man also you can stand in front of evil people and to conquer them and it's not Hasidut it's not a, a wisdom that Rabbeinu, Rabbi Nachman Breslev revealed in the world. It's halakha. It's from Shulchan Aruch. I heard it. I heard it yesterday night from Rav Nathan Maimon. Rav Nathan Maimon told me yesterday night that you can see that in the halakha that a wife of a kohen, <coughs> she is allowed to eat Asher kohen. She allowed to eat truma. Kohen is allowed to eat Ruma, and Israeli is not allowed to eat Ruma. A wife, Israeli wife of a Kohen, she is allowed to eat Ruma now. Yesterday she was not allowed to eat Ruma, now she got married, she is allowed to eat Ruma. A slave of a Kohen allows to eat Ruma. A slave, he's just a slave. What's his connection to the Kohen? He's working for the Kohen. He's a slave of the Kohen. He is allowed to eat Ruma. He is higher than an Israeli that is not allowed to eat Ruma. A dog of a Kohen, a dog of a Kohen, you're allowed to feed him Truma. A regular dog of an Israeli, you're not allowed to feed him Truma. A dog of Kohen, you're allowed to, eat him to feed him Truma. So a dog that is connected to the Kohen, he is higher than an Israeli. It's a, it's, it's a Shulchan Aruch Meforash. An Israeli gonna be the righteous, the highest man of Am Israel. If he's not a Kohen, he's not allowed to eat Truma. But the dog of a Kohen allowed to eat Truma. So I told Rav Natan yesterday that I heard from a certain rabbi that I don't know him, I wasn't in that shiur, just I heard that he said that in Breslev, in Uman, that he is jealous in a Breslev or Hasid when he's sinning more than a man that disagrees with Rabbeinu, contradicts Rabbi Nachman in Breslev, when he's keeping Torah or mitzvot, even when he's making a mitzvah. Why? Why are you jealous? You want to have those sins more than you want to have those mitzvot. Because, because he said because a student of Rabbeinu, even when he's falling down, Rabbeinu is waking up, up in tshuva from that falling, to wake up, to look for Hashem, to to ask himself what's going on with me and he's getting closer to Hashem Barach by his falling and a person outside that doesn't know Rabbeinu even when he's keeping Torah and Mitzvot what he's learning? he's learning that he is a righteous man that he is progressing Baruch Hashem that he's succeeding so actually he forgets Hashem even through Torah and Mitzvot that he's keeping he forgets Hashem without the special power of Rabbeinu to humiliate us to teach us that we're zero, that we're nothing, you cannot make it, you cannot succeed in life. Because even if you're making it, so Adraba, this is even more so that you're falling. Because you divide yourself from Hashem Barach. You feel your reality, you feel that you're something, all right, I made it, I learned, I finished Shas, I finished Shulchan Aruch, I'm a Poisek, I'm a Rabbi. You lost the connection with the Creator. You lost the connection with the Torah. The Torah can go only to low places. It's like water that have that nature to go to you to humble places. <laughs> so if you're not humble, if you're a mountain, you become to be something. You have a being. So the Torah is leaving you and going to look for someone else. So when you're connected to a righteous man like that, means a complete righteous man. So with his power, you can stand against real evil people. You have that ability by bonding yourself. When he is mekushar, when you're close to him, umekusharin, and you bond, attached to him, means that we need to work on that attachment all of the time, all of the time. Yesterday in the in the wedding of Yosef Weisberg, Baruch Hashem, we were dancing over there. Yitzi Itzchak, he took the picture of Arav Shalom and brought it and danced with that picture. Can someone say that he didn't feel that Arav Shalom was there with us? Really, say the truth. Yitzi brought the picture, we were dancing, and you saw Arav Shalom through the picture, and we all felt that Arav Shalom was there. There was no argument on that. Everyone agreed on that, that Arav Shalom was there dancing with us. You could feel that, you could see that. 
Like I told you, Rabbi Milubavitch said, in every place that you hang my picture, I'm over there also, looking from that picture. You see, Rabbi is looking, staring on you from the walls. You see, it's the power of righteous people. They have that ability. It's an amazing ability. It's something that happens. It's something that you can feel. So to attach yourself to a righteous man like that, that break, that already finished breaking all of his bad attributes, cleaned himself, cleaned himself, through hard effort, hard work. It's not that he born pure and then this is it. Those are people that went for days and weeks and nights and years to the fields and crying and doing tshuva and confessing and admitting and putting all of the efforts to, to do whatever they can to fix their, their midot and never to, in, to hurt no one. Rav Shalom said that he was praying over one year and a half, over than one year and a half, that he will never gonna forget no favor that someone done for him, that someone made with him. If you gave him a glass of water, he prayed on that, that one year and a half he prayed on that, that he will never gonna forget that glass of water that you gave him. That we will always gonna remember that and gonna appreciate it and always gonna have a karatatov. I say a karatatov, I forget that. Appreciation. Appreciation yeah. to you all of the time. All of the time. He was working on it, that, it gonna, that he gonna have it. It's not something that you're born with it. Oh, you appreciate everyone. No, no, no. He saw that he forgot few favors. He saw that he forgot few people. That, and he made tshuva on that. And he went to the field. And he was working on himself. This is how you build yourself. If you see that you have lackings, you're asking yourself what I'm going to do. I have so many lackings. It just means that those, those lackings that now you have, those are, those are places that you can make them very easily to be vessels to contain the light of Hashem. Because you're humble. You see your lackings, you see. It's written on Moshe Rabbeinu that he was shafel vesavlan. He was low and shafel and also he was savlan. What means that he was savlan? That he could bear his lackings, he could suffer his lacking. He lived with his lackings. To be humble means to know that you're low. It's not a chidush. Everyone, you can say that you're not low. You look at your mirror, you look at the mirror in the morning, you know who are you. You feel bad with yourself, you know that you have lackings. All of Am Israel are shfilim, all of Am Israel are low. You can tell that you're low. You don't know all of the Torah, you don't know how to pray, you don't know how to talk, you don't know how to keep to put filin, you don't know how to vadevarech shakol ni abidvaro, you don't know. You don't know how to wear your clothes, you don't know nothing, you really don't know. You don't know how to walk in the street, you don't know how to see it, you don't know if you do... You know that you don't know, this is the truth, you know, so you're all, all of us, we are shvelim. Just what's the difference between that to Moshe Rabbeinu? That Moshe Rabbeinu was accepting it. He could live with it. We hate that. We don't like it, we're arrogant. We cannot accept the fact that we don't know, we hate it. We want to know, we want to learn, we want to be righteous, we want to be... Why? Why? Baruch He made the world to be as is. Hashem made the world because He wants the world to be exactly like that it is. If He would want you to be a righteous man, He would make you to be a righteous man. He enjoy from your effort more than if He would create you in a different way. Hashem is good and He's doing only good and He knows exactly what He needs. He needs a plumber, He doesn't need a Tana. In this generation, he needs a plumber, he needs someone to clean toilets, he needs someone to, to paint the walls. He needs people that are going to do physical things. He needs people that know how to be, to, to function. You're going to say, you, you, you need to understand that you need everyone. I, I bought, we bought, my wife and, me, and I, we bought a, a closet to the house. And I built it, I tried to, Baal Hashem, and all of the all of the frames all of the sides of it i made it perfect really you can ask yohanan he's not here now i called him crying in the middle of the night the doors i couldn't make it and i'm working on it and and, and i have pretty good hands i'm working i know how to do things and i'm working and i'm sweating and nothing 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 and and it, it you know the doors are, are just like that and and one is closing on the other one and, and you cannot fix it. I cannot fix it. Right? The truth. I tried and I switched the doors and I was working and you have... 
few combinations to do for a few two sc um, um, uh, screw, screws, screws that that you need to change and and I tried and I tried that idea and that idea I had them all <laughs> and I couldn't make it and yesterday came to our house a certain Ishmaeli that he is a carpenter also with all of the rest of the things that he knows to do and my wife is asked, telling me ask him maybe he can check the closet so I told him look we're on the way to the store to bring it back. It's something wrong with it. <laughs> and he's saying, let me check. And he's looking and there is nothing to see. I'm telling you, there is nothing to see. And he, uh, you have a screw, screwdriver? I told him, yes, I brought to him. And he, he's looking and telling me, what have you done? And he's fixing and he's what have you done? Another one. <laughs> and going to the third one, what have you done? <laughs> there is nothing to do over there. You just need to bring it. So I told him, you know, if you would sit instead of me in the Beit Midrash, everyone would ask you, what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, you have your talents, I have mine, Lavdil. You need to keep on working, building closets, I need to keep sitting in Beit Midrash. Everyone has his job, everyone, Borola is sending him to do something else in the world. He cannot sit in the Beit Midrash to learn Torah, he cannot. We have a job. If you can respect your wife, no one can respect your wife. If you can raise your kids, no one else can raise your kids. If you know how to sing, if you know how to dance, if you know how to write, if you know how to talk, if you know how to do, I don't know what, no one can replace you. No one can replace you. They need to have a distributor, a mafitz of Arav Shalom in that catering. They need to have a, a mafitz of Arav Shalom to be a lawyer. They need to have a mafitz of Arav Shalom that's going to be a gardener, ganan. They need to have a few, few mafitzim in a lot of areas, in a lot of places. So they had to qualify you, first of all, to have a certain job. Because if they, in the beginning, would have taught you Torah, you would never go to work in that catering. You would never go to learn how to be a lawyer. No chance in the world that you would do that. But they still need you to do that. This is why Boro Olam first of all taught you how to be a lawyer. And first of all brought you to learn English, to live in this land, in that land, and to come and to have that history, that background. Hashem, He's got the plan. We don't have the plan. We should believe that there is a plan. And to keep on walking, keep on functioning, right? to do what that Hashem wants us to do. And you can check and you can tell and you can know. It's very easy to know. If it's good, you're doing it. If it's bad, you're not doing it. If it makes you happy, you're doing it. If it makes you sad, you're not doing it. Even if other people are telling you that you have to. Even if all of the Haredim are saying to you that you have to scream Shabbos on every driving car, if you don't find it as part of your Avodat Hashem, you're not doing it. Moshe, stop doing it, please. Don't do that anymore. <laughs> stop with that fake Onik Shabbos, Moshe. It's not real. You're not going to grow by that mitzvah. It's a mitzvah, but you know, there are plenty of mitzvot. You need to find your source, your letter, your neshama. Every Jew has got a letter. It can be that your letter is in the first parasha, it can be in the second parasha, it can be in the 13th verse, in the 15th verse, in the 206th verse, verse. You can never tell. You should find it. You should look for it. You should check. Who am I? What is my connection to Hashem? When you're connecting yourself to a righteous man that can see that, that he can guide you, that he can heal you from all of your sicknesses, from all of your mental problems, he can heal you. He can smile to you. I was talking to one of Avrahim that is learning in the yeshiva for over 10 years. He's telling me, I, I, he told me like that. He said, I know everyone are saying it, that they are alive because of Arav. But I'm telling you, really, you should believe me. The truth is that without Arav, I wouldn't be alive. I told him why. I'm smiling, asking him why. He's telling, I have that nature to go down to sadness and depression in a way that from every falling, I can <coughs> crush. And I'm crushing, and this is my nature. I'm going to those places. He told me I have a daughter that she never smiles and she's exactly like me. This is me. I never smile. I cannot smile. It's not me. I'm sad. 
And my wife, she's getting crazy from that daughter. She's always saying, why she's not happy? Why she's not smiling? What's the reason? And I know the reason. I'm also sad. And he's saying, and this is my nature. I cannot be happy. When I'm smiling, it's a miracle. And only because of Arav. Only because of what that Arav gave me through the years. And Hashem gave me the gift, he's saying, that I believe him. That I believe Arav. That I believe that he's right. That he knows what he's saying. And I'm counting on it, even if I'm not holding that level. And only by that, I'm alive. And I'm not dying. I'm not going with those sadnesses. Because Arav is reviving me and reviving me again and again and again. So you can see that those righteous people, that they achieved that happiness, that they worked on their sadnesses until they went out from those sadnesses. Harav Shalom had difficulties that we can never imagine. He had one time, he said that he had over 80,000 shekels debts that he couldn't pay. And even if he, only the interest, the, the rebit was growing faster than his income, than his maskoret. 20, 30 years ago, he didn't have had how to pay. They were living in a house with no windows. The house that he lives now looked like very fancy, very clean. That house when they bought it, in the first day that they went to the house, I told you that once, they saw that there was a cross on the windows, the, 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 the stick, sticks of wood that were inside the window. It was a cross. It was, it was Mshtiva Erev. So it was, it was the middle of the winter and they broke all of the windows in the house. And three months they didn't have money to fix the windows. And for three months in the middle of the winter, he said we were making fire inside of the house to heat ourselves. He said we didn't have toilet in the house, we didn't have a kitchen in the house. He said one thing we had in Shefa, in plenty of, what? Rats. Rats! Animals they had a lot. A lot of mice and rats were running inside out. This is how, this is what they had. He said we had days that we were sending Nachman and Nathan, his sons, to, bay, to, to Talmud Torah with no bread. He said not with hum, without hummus, in, or without cheese in the bread. He said without bread. They were sending their kids. Harav Shalom said that students in yeshiva that he was learning in Shuvu Banim were asking him, how can you be so happy? with the debts that you have and the problems that you had. He said they were all wondering how can it be. This is the secret. That he was pulling himself into happiness, into looking on the good side of it. And he said he was say that, that he was saying to Hashem Barach for hours, Hashem, how can I thank you on those debts? You brought me so close to you. Now I can believe in you so much. Harav Berland said that the debts that he had, Harav Berland, that uh, debts that Harav Berland had, he said on that, he testified, that that was the thing that brought him closest to Hashem Barach more than everything else. Harav Shalom didn't say that, that it was the most than the rest, but he said, I cannot say that, but I can say that it brought me very, very close to Hashem Barach. What? The debts. The lack of money, something that we all are running away from it, don't want to hear about it. No, chas shalom, not to have debts. No. You're right, you're not allowed to have debts. But Hashem, He knows better. <coughs> if now you have debts, it's exactly what that you need to go through. Hashem said you need to get married, wonderful. But if Hashem didn't give you your wife yet, who are you arguing with? Hashem, He knows better than you, that for you now, it's not the right thing. If He would want you to get married, you, were, be, you could be yesterday under the chupa. Hashem can do that. You saw that Hashem done that. Yosef himself told me that he was praying a lot in Uman. When it was Uman? Rosh Hashanah. Three months ago. Four now. He said he was praying a lot on the Shiduch. He came back, immediately found his Shiduch. He told me, he confessed, he told me, I have to tell you, it's hard for me to believe that really Hashem answered to me so fast. Really? It's, it just happened? This is what much? You're praying and Hashem is answering? Yes. Yes. It's hard to believe, but yes. And if Hashem didn't give you your wife yet, or all of the things that you're praying on them for years, and it means that it, you don't need that now. You don't need it now. It's not for you. I remember myself from a few years ago, before that we bought that, the, 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 the car that I have. I came to Arav and I asked him, Arav, I need a car. He told me, not now, not now. 
After a few months I had a miracle and we could find the car and we bought the car. And but, but when that I wanted the car, it wasn't the right time to the car. Even though that the first car that we had was small and it wasn't comfortable for us and it wasn't good for us at all and we had our, our thoughts we had. But Hashem's thoughts are higher and they are right. And they're bringing you to the purpose that you're going to believe in Hashem, that you're going to see Hashem. Right, it's written that a man with no kids and a man with no boys and I don't know. It's written. What are you going to do? Rabbi Milubavitch, I'm going to tell you a secret. He never had boys, children. So what do you think? That you will not going to have a share in the world to come? It's written that if a man doesn't have mm, kids, he, can, he doesn't have a share in the world to come. So the Rabbi, you will not going to have a share in the world to come, but you're going to be with the Rabbi Milubavitch. All right. I'm ready to sign on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. Now I can sign on that. You're going to be with Ramod the Chai Sharabi. You're going to be with Rabbi Yonatan Ben Uziel. All right, great. They don't have a world to come. Yonatan Ben Uziel, that he never got married, didn't have boys. This is great, perfect. I want to be with him. Look for the truth. It doesn't mean that really, if you read it, that you understand it. The Torah is a lot deeper, a lot, a lot deeper, a lot deeper. And you need to have the merit to understand what the verses are saying and to who it's talking and what is your point in Avodat Hashem and how you are connected to that verse and what is your connection to that verse and to that piece of Gemara and to that Midrash. And you cannot understand it all in one day. No way, no chance. No chance. You need to put a lot of effort, a lot of sweat, a lot of tears, a lot of prayers, a lot, a lot of sacrifice, sacrificing, a lot you need to sacrifice. A lot, a lot, a lot, everything. When you're giving everything, you can have it all. But when you're not giving everything, so you cannot understand it all. Because like Rabbeinu said, the little, little coin is hiding the, the, the sun. How can it be that a small coin, you hold a penny, you hold one shekel coin, you put it close to your eye, you cannot see the sun. You cannot see the sun. A small coin like that, that it's nothing actually, can hide, can block all of the sun. Why? Because you're bringing it very close to your eyes. This is why you cannot see. Because you're so concentrating, chasing after nonsense, that you cannot see the faith, you cannot see Hashem. But if you're going to take it far from your, you're going to push it, reject it, reject money, reject desires, reject food, reject lusts, reject all of the nonsense, suddenly you're going to see a huge picture, a wonderful picture, that there is a glowing sun in the center, that there is blue sky, that there is green mountains, there is trees, there is animals, there is creator. You're going to realize that there is also money. You can understand what money is all about, what women are all about, what honor is all about, what everything. You're going to understand their job, what's their <coughs> purpose in creation. And you're going to be an outsider. You're going to observe on that. You won't have no self-interest that pulls you to like bribe, to mistake, and to lie, and to t chase after your lies, lies, and to twist the truth. And always to, 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 to bend everything and to lie all day long. To lie and to lie, to lie and to lie. Even inside of the Bet Midrash you can lie. Even when you're teaching Torah you can lie. If you have a certain will that you want to achieve something through the Torah, you're lying. It's a lie. You need to cancel yourself, to let Hashem illuminate the world, to bring Hashem into the world, to bring Harav into the world, to bring Rabbi Nachman into the world. If you have a will, if you have a, a, a desire, a selfish one, that you want to bring yourself, you're blocking the light of Hashem from illuminating. You're blocking the light of Hashem from illuminating. You have to step aside. Let Harav sit in his, in his seat, in his chair. Let Arav runs the yeshiva. You want to be the manager of the yeshiva? Let Arav. You want to be the manager of the world? All of the time you're criticizing and judging everyone. That man needs to be punished. Those people, they have to be kicked out. That man, he's an evil man. What are you doing? What are you doing? They asked once one of the righteous people, they asked him what you, have, what, what you would do if you would be Hashem. So he said, I wouldn't change nothing. I would do exactly the same. 
But the truth is that we're not holding that very high level, very simple level, but very high level. We always have good ideas how to fix the world. <laughs> always. A lot of things we would, we would have changed. But all of them are lies. All of them are lusts and desires. You want quiet, you don't want to deal, you don't want to confront yourself, you don't want to see your lackings, you don't want to see your bad attribute, you don't want to. You want quiet like the Batiana, what's the name Batiana? Ostrich. That she's hiding her head under the earth, under the ground. When she sees danger, she's not looking, it's not exist. They're gonna hunt her now, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna eat her now. No, nothing gonna happen. When they came to Rabbi Nachman in Breslev, there was a horrible decree to take little kids of Bnei Israel to the army in, in Ukraine 200 years ago. And they came to a little bit more. And they came to Rabenu. And in that time, in, that, in those days, they said over there, no, Hashem will not gonna do that to us. Hashem, Hashem, Rabenu was angry on, the, on that. Rabenu was very strict on that. And he said, you need, you're not allowed to say Hashem will not gonna do that to us. Hashem done horrible things to us until today. This is what Rabenu said. Horrible things Hashem done. And people said, no, Hashem will not going to do that. You need to pray. There was one woman over there that they kidnapped her boy. I, I, I think it was after that Rabenu passed away, when Rabbi Nathan, Rabenu made it to, to, to reject that decree for 25 years. He rejected that decree. But after that he passed away, it happened. And they took those babies and the little kids. And one time they, kid they kidnapped one boy and the mother realized that and she it was in the village in the that rabbi in the city that rabbi Nathan lived in and she realized that and she ran into the Beit Knesset and she opened the Echal, the Sefer Torah and she screamed and she cried and she screamed and she cried and she died in the Beit Knesset from her sorrow from her sadness that they took her boy she fell down dead in the Beit Knesset and there was a huge noise in the city that something so horrible, a tragedy happened in the city. That poor woman, she died. Rabbi Nathan asked what happened. They told him exactly. He said, she is the one to blame. She done something wrong. If she would go every day to do one hour prayers on her son, not only her son she would save, she would save a lot of other boys from Am Israel with her prayers. What the benefit, what she gained now that she died, she will not <coughs> going to receive her son. She died, she haven't saved no one else also. Just everyone afraid and in trauma now because of that horrible thing that happened. If you're going to be wise to go to Hashem Barach and to talk to Him every day, one hour on your issues, you're not going to only save yourself, also you're going to save others. There are so many people that connected to us spiritually that we don't know. Rabenu said, if you're going to open the skin of a Jew, you're going to see that he's got strings, lines from him, from inside, that connected to all of the wide world. A Jew is connected. Your um, um, General, General soul. soul. Connected soul. Collective. collective soul that connected. It's written that Adam Rishon, he was calling names to the animals. He said, you're a zebra, you're a giraffe, you're an elephant, you're a lion. And he called the names. But in those days when he called them names, their attributes were perfect. They were living in peace in Gan Eden. They were not hunting each other. They didn't have Midata Ka'as. They didn't have bad attributes, the animals. Why? Because Adam, he was the one that called them the names. He gave them their natures. But now when we are calling the lion a lion, we are the same Adam, all of human beings together. When we're calling him a lion, when we're calling him Aryeh, we're giving him our nature. He becomes to be that poor lion that he is today. That he's suffering all day long. All of the animals are suffering. Even the lion. All of them are suffering. They have lusts. They have desires. They have bad thoughts. They have bad attributes, anger, poison. They have all of those things. Why? Because of us. Because we are deciding what their nature is going to be. 
It's written on Noach. I hope I'm going to be able to remember that exactly like the Tarav Shalom said. Not exactly. I told you that once that I know for sure and that even Hashem going to testify on me. There is no doubt about it that I never made it to say even one sentence that the Rav said like that he said it. And that Hashem can testify on me for sure, no doubt. I never made it to say something that the Rav Shalom said exactly like that he said. For me it's impossible. Well, for now, Baruch Hashem. So, Rav Shalom explained it, that it's written on, <coughs> on, the, on the animals. I don't, re don't remember the verse exactly. But on the animals, on the pure animals, it's written also ish man, man and his one, a man and his wife. On the, on the when Noach brought the animals into the ark, it's written on the pure animals, ish ishto, man and his wife. So Arab, one of the students of Arab asked him and told him that how can it be that on on the pure on the pure animals you can write them man and his wife on animals you, you have weddings between animals you don't have that even in kosher animals you don't have it you don't need it so so why so the answer is because they were the animals of Noah and Noah was so holy, was so pure, and he was the righteous man. So even his animals received the attributes of Noah. They were pure like him. The animals that were belong to him received his nature. And they become to be man and his wife. They had relationship, they had shalom bite, they were animals. They were animals, they were mamash, human beings, they were educated, they were trained. <laughs> no, 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 they were not trained. They had a good nature. They had a very good nature, Noach's nature. Then Noach, comfortable, this is the meaning of Noach. Comfortable, he was Noach. He was, he was smiling. So it all depends in us. The reality that you look outside and you see... I remember once there was a student in, in the yeshiva that came to me and and and, and he told me, on a certain day, he came to me and he told me that people are so angry and almost hitting each other. And, uh, and he was talking about situations that he saw in the yeshiva and he had a horrible complaint. And, and I heard him, Baruch Hashem, what can I do? I, I know myself, what can I do? So, all right, I, I heard him. In the shiur, I wasn't thinking about it at all, really. I didn't plan that at all, at all, at all. But in the middle of the shiur, suddenly, I was talking on that issue exactly. And I said those very strong, it was a very strong rebuke, but with no meaning, really. I'm innocent. I wasn't thinking, so you cannot blame me on that. And I just said it, and I said, if you, blame, if you see someone else that is uh, doing something bad, it's because that you have that bad nature and mamash all from heaven. I just, when I said that conclusion that it's all because of you, I looked at him and I stared at him and I saw those words into his face and he, he was just, and he looked at me like that I was breaking all of his bones and I, I, I didn't plan to do that at all. And he didn't come back to the yeshiva anymore after that shiur. He went. He was insulted, it was too hard for him to accept it. I don't you on that, but oh, what can I do? It wasn't my fault. If Hashem wanted to rebuke him, that he had those attributes, so it's not my fault. Hashem used me. I'm doing tshuva, I'm happy on my good share. I'm doing tshuva on my lackings. What can I do? You cannot do nothing. It's Hashem's world. Hashem is running all of that wonderful world. He is making it all happen. He wants you to be rebuked in something. He wants to educate you in something. He wants to heal you in something. There are things that you cannot accept unless if HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to be hard with you on those issues because you're stoned, because you're drunk, because you're lazy, because you don't want to wake up, because it's comfortable for you to keep staying like that, like that you are. On Shalom Bayit. On Shalom Bayit, how many rebukes we need to receive? Even the ones that have Shalom Bayit, the ones of us that have really good relationships, we're all wrong. We're all wrong. Do you really appreciate your wife? Do you really connect it to your wife, that you appreciate your wife, that you understand her sorrow, her, her difficulties, that you really care about her? Rav Shalom said, only someone that is totally, totally clean, totally clean, 
can love his wife, really can love his wife. And the wife, she just waits to when her husband gonna love her, gonna honor her, gonna respect her, it's all gonna show her, proves that he loves her. She just needs to see that you love me, just this is what that she needs to see. Do you give her that feeling? Do you care about her? This is the only thing that she needs. It's her life. She depends in that. This is her lifeline. This is her air supply. Rav Shalom said that for women, compliments are more important than air supply. Than air, than to breathe. With no air she can handle. It's okay. She can handle. You can see that. They can handle in every situation. But if she sees that, that she's got someone in her, in her life, someone that loves her, she can carry it all. She can raise the kids, she can clean the house, she can bring Panasa, can work in two jobs, she can do everything to make Shabbos all alone. Everything she can do to buy all of the things to the house, shop, everything, everything she can do. Hashem can give her powers that you can never imagine what she can do. And she doesn't need you for nothing when she's telling you, why are you not helping me? It's only to, to see that you are there. Just to see that you are there. Just checking you. One of the students here in the yeshiva told me, he's not learning Mamash with us, but Mamash, one of the mm, closest students, he told me that when, when he, he wanted to have a beard, and, and he started to, to grow his beard and his wife, she, 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 she didn't want that. She didn't want it to have, to have that he's going to have the beard. And, 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 and I think we all heard it together that, that he said that. that uh, and then he shaved his beard and when he came to the house, his wife, she told him, you can leave the beard, now you can, now you can grow your beard. She just wanted to check. She just wanted to see if really he cares about her or that the beard, this is the... What is a beard? What is it? Even to Hashem that you, wow, the Zohar Kadosh is writing on the beard, that the beard is so important, the Zohar Kadosh is writing frightening things on the beard. All right, but can you really think that this is the main thing in Avodat Hashem, to have a beard? Can it be that Hashem is so serious on, on the beard. Can it be that this is Hashem, that Hashem? It's something. It's something in Avodat Hashem. It's not the main thing in Avodat Hashem. All right, Gemara, you're going to say Gemara, the main part of the Torah, Kedosha, Gemara, Holy Gemara. People died for the Gemara, Kedosha. People learning day and night. Only Gemara, the main limud in all of the Midrashot is Gemara, Holy Talmud Bavli. You're right. You think that this is, this is, Torah, 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 Mamash, real Torah. This is it, this is for that, really, Borolam, for that, for the Gemara. Even though that we can, the answer on that is yes, also on the beard. Arab Berland explained that, that in the Zohar Kadosh is written that the 13 um, midot, attributes of kindness, are similar to the 13 tikkunet dikna, 13 things that have been fixed by the beard. And the only reason that we are here in this world alive is to reveal the kindness of Hashem Mitbarach and it all depends in the beard. So actually the beard is doing all of the job. The beard is doing it because it depends in the beard. Just don't shave your beard. This is it. So Rav Berland asked in the shiur, so what is the man? If the beard is doing everything alone, and it so what is the man? So he answered, it's a nice stander for the beard. A nice stander, a very nice stander. So even you can say that the beard, this is the main thing in Avodat Hashem, and all of you is just a nice stander for that beard. Wonderful, great, sounds perfect, no problem. Something is missing. Also the Gemara, the highest of them all. Also Hidbodedut, the highest of them all. If you don't have Shlom Bait, you don't have nothing. You can learn Gemara all day long to have the longest beard in the world, whatever. You don't have Shlom Bait, you lost it. You lost everything. You lost Hashem. Hashem is not in your house. You can have all of the house covered with Gemarot and with beards and whatever. <laughs> Hashem is not with you. Hashem loves peace. Hashem's name is peace. 
love in the house, love, connection, affection, support, kindness, generosity. People that are cheap, it's nightmare for the wives. Nightmare. If you're cheap, it's you're 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 worse than the devil for your wife. If you're going to buy, you see two things and you're checking, what should I buy for her? This or that? The answer is the answer is both. This is the answer. The halacha, this is the answer. It's not Hasidut. The halacha is saying that the man needs to honor his wife in more than what that he's got. So if you decided to buy her a gift in 100 shekel, so it means that you should buy her a gift in more than 100 shekel. Because this is what the halacha is saying, that you should honor her with more than what that you got. And 100, you said that, all right, this is what that you have for that gift. And even if you said, no, to this time I'm going to buy for her in 400 shekel and you're doing a mesirut nefesh, you took those 400 shekels because you know that you can manage. So this is what that you have. So you need to give something else. You need to believe that the parnasah is coming from the hands of Hashem and not by how that you're calculating your, 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 your incomes and your, your expenses and your bank account and I don't know what. Not in that the parnasa depends at all. Only from your wide and open hand that is all full with kindness that is giving to us more and more. It doesn't mean that you need to be crazy. If you would say enough compliments to your wife, you wouldn't have to spend a shekel, one shekel on gifts. Really? When you buy a ring, a golden ring, when you buy a diamond, after that you insulted her. You know that, right? But if you're not insulting your wife, you don't need all of those nonsense. You don't need. A happy wife, she doesn't need nothing. She doesn't need restaurants, she doesn't need to go to Mamila, she doesn't need nothing. She doesn't need to go to visit her parents, she doesn't need nothing. She doesn't need a car, she doesn't need nothing. She's happy, she's happy. How is she gonna be happy? Compliments, good words. That you're really gonna try to give her that good feeling that she is important, that you love her, that you care about her. And even if you have thousands of other things and you need to cancel a lot of them for the house, for the wife, for the honor, even if you're gonna do that, if you're just gonna observe how much you're gaining how much you're gaining, how much you're gaining every day that you can come to the yeshiva, just that. Just that, that she's not stopping you to come to the yeshiva daily. Just that, you know, on which huge, gigantic treasure you're sitting, that your wife permits you to go to yeshiva chut shel chesed to learn Torah all day, every day, until one, until one, this is it. I met one of the students that were with us here for a long time and he suddenly disappeared. I asked him, what's going on? How are you? He said, perfect, perfect, all good. I asked him, what's going on with the Shalom Bayit? He said, we're not divorced yet. It's a good answer. Still there's hope. <laughs> We're not divorced yet. Perfect. It's good. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. And Rav Shalom said, the ones that think that they are wiser than the one that wrote Garden of Peace, we're going to see them in a few years. You think, no, it's not the book for me. It's not for my house. It's not for me. You have your wisdoms. You think you know best. Let's see. Let's see what's going to be with your wife. Let's see what's going to be with your children. Where they going to be in five years, in ten years. Let's see the results. Let's see the real results of life. You're so brave. To say that you feel that you're strong, that you're stable. If you don't know that everything that you have, you're receiving it from someone that is above you, that he's the one that is influencing it to you because he loves you. He doesn't need your honor, he doesn't need your money, he doesn't need your support, he doesn't need your compliments, he doesn't need you. He's doing it all for you because of his loving kindness, because he's got mercy on you. He can live in a cage, like, like in, in, in a cave, I'm sorry, in a cave like Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, for 12 years he doesn't need nothing. He can eat mm, carobs. He doesn't need you. He can drink water and eat bread in salt. He doesn't need nothing. He doesn't need no honor. Think Rabbi needs you to kiss his hands. He enjoy that. He said, it's disgusting me. He said, I'm disgusted from people, from, 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 
all of the saliva, people coming and kissing my head. It's sad, it's disgusting me. This is what it is said. Sad, but what can you do? People need him. And he sees that we need him, so he's coming. He needs us to pray with intention, he needs the minyan for to pray with intention. He can bring angels and to pray with them. He needs that minyan. He needs Purim, he needs all of those celebrations, he needs... No, he can be happy in his house, he doesn't need nothing. But he knows that we cannot be happy in our houses. He knows that we cannot be happy in Purim without him. He knows that. He received when his mother passed away a few years ago, he received an improvement from a rabbi to come to a celebration of Simchat Torah that were playing music, music just because that he knew in Akafot Shniot, just because that he knew and he explained that, that we will not going to be happy if you will not going to come. So he came. He received improvement to come in the year on his mother to a celebration playing music in Akafot Shniot of, because he knew that we were not going to be happy if we were not going to be there. And he was there. He was sitting mourning on his mother in Simchat Torah. <laughs> what can he do? Thank you very much, Rabbi Yisrael.